James 4.4. 4. Who was James, by the way? James was Christ's earthly brother. Jesus had four earthly brothers. Joseph and Mary had four sons besides Jesus, who was only Mary's son, virgin born. But Joseph and Mary got married and had four sons and two daughters minimum. It just says daughters plural. We don't know if they had two, three, four, but they had at least two. So Jesus grew up in a family minimum seven, him and six others plus. The oldest boy was James. Jude was his brother. Jude wrote the epistle of Jude. James wrote the epistle of James. James became the pastor of the first church. The people who got saved in Pentecost went to James's church because even though he was an unbeliever during Christ's life, he got saved. And Christ came to visit him. He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved. Jesus visited him, 1 Corinthians 15 says. And James became revered as the brother of Christ and the pastor of the church. This book of James, the book of James, has 108 verses. And it has 54 imperatives. It's probably one of the densest command-filled books of the Bible. And chapter 4 is a sermon that James is preaching in the first church in Jerusalem. And he says, adulterers and adulteresses, 4-4, four, four. do you not know that friendship with the world makes God your enemy? Whosoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself the enemy of God. A worldly person's identity is found in this world, not in heaven. James said, if, you, if your identity is in what kind of shoes you wear, what kind of clothes you wear, how good your suntan is, how you know, fit you are, how macho your social image, if it's in your possessions, if it's in your career, if it's in your accomplishments, if it's in your house, if it's in your car or your health, and you're connected completely to earth, that you're God's enemy. See, God wants us to be pilgrims and strangers on earth. He wants us to have a little disconnect from the culture we live in. And for people to say, why do you act that way? And you say, because I'm a citizen, Philippians 3.20, of heaven. This world is not my home. I'm living in a tent. I'm not, I'm not trying to live for every ounce of stuff and things I can own and control and enjoy. I'm living for heaven. That's the message of chapter 18. And the question for us is, are we worldly? And 1 Corinthians 6, I mean 1 Timothy 6, and you can read these, has what Paul writes down on behalf of the Lord as the, what I call the seven keys to contentment. Um, and, and basically in verse 11, 1 Timothy 6, 11, it says, uh, flee these things. Flee materialism. In other words, don't, don't upgrade and try and always have the very newest and the latest. Intentionally, I always stay at least one step behind the latest upgrades. Because I never want to be driven to be standing in line at the Apple store and camping because I can't live without the newest and latest whatever. See, we need to flee whatever form of materialism there is. Verse 12, cling to eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Verse 17 of chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty. The Lord said there's nothing wrong with being rich. I sat on the airplane once on a Word of Life trip. Uh, John MacArthur sent me on a trip to speak for him at Word of Life in Chile, in Ecuador, in Argentina, in Peru, all these places. And he sent me, and I went, and Word of Life ferried us around. And the whole trip, this man sat next to me on every airplane flight. And he wore bib overalls and jeans and Farmer John shirt, you know. And I talked to him. He was always watching me and talking. At the end of the trip, I found out his name was Don Hershey. That year, he'd earned $600 million. He had 24 million chickens. Every egg McMuffin, the egg was from him. You know what I mean? This guy was uber wealthy, and he was a word of life donor. And he's just a normal guy. 
I never knew he was rich. He just talked with me. He wore bib overalls and Farmer John flannel shirt. He was clinging. Do you know why he went on the trip? He had his checkbook. Everywhere he went, he was writing $25,000, $50,000, $100,000 checks. Because this world was not his home, and he was trying to give it away as fast as he could before it was too late to give it away. Pin your hopes on God, not on your money. Verse 18, give until it hurts. Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give. That's what God says are the keys to contentment.